Beneath the breathtaking beauty of America's first national park lies a secret, a power so immense it shapes the very ground we walk on. The geysers, the hot springs, the bubbling mud pots, they are not just tourist attractions. They are the breath of a slumbering giant, the whispers of a force that could rewrite the world map. This is not just a park. This is the caldera of the Yellowstone supervolcano. To understand what a supervolcano is, we must first forget everything we know about regular volcanoes. This isn't a mountain. It's a vast subterranean factory of destruction. Yellowstone is a hotspot, a colossal plume of superheated rock rising from deep within the Earth's mantle. And it has spoken before. Not once, not twice, but three times in cataclysmic events that dwarf any volcanic eruption in human history. The last time it erupted, over 600,000 years ago, it spewed over 240 cubic miles of rock, ash, and gas into the atmosphere. It didn't just build a mountain, it collapsed the land above its magma chamber, creating a caldera over 50 miles wide. This vast, gentle depression in the land is the scar from that last awakening. The giant's footprint. But is the giant truly asleep? The answer is a definitive no. It is restless. The entire park is a dynamic, living landscape because of the volcano beneath it. The ground itself breathes. In some areas, it rises by inches per year, pushed upwards by the pressurized magma below. In others, it falls. This immense heat is the engine for Yellowstone's 10,000 geothermal features. Every geyser blast, every bubbling spring, is a direct release of the volcano's incredible energy. And then there are the earthquakes, thousands of them every year. Most are too small to feel, but they are a constant reminder of the shifting, cracking crust above the magma chamber. This is not a silent slumber. It is a fitful one, constantly monitored by scientists who listen to the giant's every murmur and groan. So, what would happen if it awoke? The initial eruption would be an event of absolute horror. It would be the worst day in human history. The explosion would be heard across continents, Pyroclastic flows would instantly vaporize everything within a 60-mile radius. But the immediate blast is only the beginning. The real threat is the ash. Hundreds of cubic miles of it, ejected into the atmosphere, would blanket most of the United States. This isn't like fireplace ash. It's fine, abrasive, and toxic. It would smother crops, collapse roofs, clog engines, and render the air unbreathable. Transportation, agriculture, and power grids would fail continent-wide. The world's climate would plunge into a volcanic winter, with temperatures dropping for years, leading to global famine. This sounds like the plot of a doomsday movie, but before we succumb to fear, it's crucial to listen to the science. The annual probability of a Yellowstone supereruption is astronomically low. Estimates suggest it's about 1 in 730,000 in any given year. You are vastly more likely to be struck by lightning. More importantly, a supereruption would not strike without warning. Scientists believe we would have decades, perhaps even centuries, of escalating signs increased earthquake swarms, extreme ground deformation, changes in geothermal activity. The idea that it could just blow tomorrow is a myth. The monitoring network at Yellowstone is the most sophisticated in the world, designed to give humanity a tremendous heads up. So, 
the sleeping giant is not a monster lurking in the shadows, waiting to pounce. It is a fundamental part of our planet's living, breathing geology. Its terrifying power is precisely what created the iconic beauty we cherish today. It is a reminder of the raw, untamable forces that shaped our world long before we arrived and will continue long after we are gone. Yellowstone is not a threat to be feared, but a wonder to be respected. A sleeping giant, yes, but one that reminds us of the incredible, dynamic planet we call home.